when I stated I no longer wanted to be what everyone else yeah. wanted me to be, that was actually the turning point. And that's what helped me let go of always dwelling in the past. So I think as I began to see that people were responding to me differently than before, it gave me hope. It, it loosened me up. You know, I could laugh. I could be involved in people's lives. And there wasn't a barrier. Because always before, I, I built a wall. I created this wonderful facade when I first went into my career. And so you have to exchange. And what you're talking about, you have to let go of the past. But I think you have to want to be who you are. And that's, that's, that's the only way you can pass from the past to what's ahead. Yeah. Gail Porter is joining us today here on the Beating House on Faith Radio, the CPE Christian Product Expo Summer 2024 show in Fort Wayne, Indiana. You've written a book called Living on the Path of Freedom, Leaving Fear of Rejection Behind. The enemy obviously wants to destroy us. He wants to yes. use our past against us. And he wants to drive home this whole fear of rejection because we recognize that he's the father of lies. And so he'll whisper in our ears, Jesus, or, or uh, the book, uh, book of Second Timothy talks about God not giving us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So mm -hmm. we recognize fear is not of God. So it's important, it's incumbent upon us to really walk free from fear. But we also recognize the enemy wants to use our past against us. So when we think about looking behind, mm -hmm. how can we do that biblically mm -hmm. without that becoming something that the enemy would use against us? <laughs> I'm glad you brought up the enemy the lies of mm -hmm. the enemy and that that's what kept me in bondage and that's what keeps other people in bondage and so I think when we recognize that we need to be listening to the voice of God not the voice of the enemy that begins to separate us and I think some of the courage comes from that realizing God created me he knows the person I want to be he is always by my side. He's always in my court. <laughs> and so I think we need to re reach out to God and really let him be fully our lives, in our lives, and open to whatever he wants us to be that day and in the days to come. Mm. So there has to be this separation. But I think once you begin to take that step of courage, it loosens what the enemy has set and you begin to to focus on who you are in god rather than oh the enemy is telling me i'm not worth it don't no. even bother well and our thought life is so important because mm. obviously the enemy will whisper lies mm -hmm. to us yes we have to replace those lies take every thought captive so what in this book, do you really use as far as the, the scriptures to help lead people into a life where they're thinking biblically rather than thinking in a manner that is consistent with what the enemy would want to do, which is destructive? Definitely. And I think scripture is just the bottom line. Uh, fear not, for I'm with you. Mm. I will always uphold you with my righteous right hand. I know who you are. I love the way you are. And just let the scripture just mm, empower us to begin to let go. And it's, it's a step-by-step -step process. It doesn't happen overnight. But the viewpoint, if we look at what God is telling us and what God has shown us even in our past, we, we see it, it plants a path ahead of us. And so I think... I've been talking a lot more about the enemy when I'm talking with people and answering their questions and encouraging them. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy.